Hi everyone, this week we're going to be talking about the oiling system in my Ultima. I haven't had the opportunity to do a lot of building this week, so there's not a video on that. Uh, the reason being is that I had to get my friends around to help me flip the chassis. Uh, and, you know, we needed sort of four or five people to be able to do that. And the second reason being is that I've been chasing my missus around the countryside while she does an ultra marathon. Uh, downside being no time to build the Ultima. Upside being that I had the opportunity to drive my Land Rover. Uh, I love old Land Rovers. I think they're a, a very genuine driving experience. Uh, and I think they can teach you a lot about uh, about driving. Uh, there's a short clip at the end that sort of covers covers some of that. Um, you know, I don't think most people learn how to left foot brake, uh, match revs, uh, do all that sort of stuff, even basic car control in, in a Ferrari 458. They probably learn it in something a bit more modest. And, and I think Land Rovers really give a good good appreciation for that, that sort of stuff. They'll punish poor driving and they'll, and they'll reward good driving. So yeah, there's a short clip at the end of that. Uh, that uh, you know just talks about it talks about another one of my cars that, that, that I really love but today the main thing will be just covering what this is how it works uh, the difference between a dry sump and a wet sump the advantages and disadvantages between each uh, the main reason for me not going a full dry sump setup is simply based on one necessity I'm building a road and track car not a full not a full bodied race car that doesn't mean that it's going to be incompetent in any measure it'll still uh, out grip almost anything else on the road uh, and the other thing is cost. Uh, you, you're talking sort of six to eight grand for a, for a multi-stage pickup uh, daily or moroso system to do that properly. And um, you know, there's an LS7 sort of dry sump system that sits there in the middle. But if you're not building an LS7 to start with, it, it's uh, in my mind a bit of a, a bit of an awkward place to go, uh, simply because it's it's a single point pickup system. And whilst it's very good. Uh, it's kind of like turning up to a party and drinking mid-strength beer, you know, no one knows whether you're there really to have a good time or whether you're driving home. So that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I think what I would prefer to do is just stick with a system that's going to meet my road and track means. There's going to be some limitations to that, that I'm going to talk about. And then, you know, down the track, if, if I think the car's capable and I'm capable and, and the cost and, and the affordability is there for me to go and chase, chase more serious lap times, then, you know, I'd be pulling the sump and, and potentially retrofitting a full full dry sump setup. But look, we're going to run through all that sort of stuff today. Uh, if you if you have any comments or any questions or, or you know, you even have some, some sort of opinion that's or valid opinion is probably more important uh, that that sort of goes against what I'm saying. Then I'm more than welcome it down the down the bottom of the comment section, and we'll address it. And you know, if there is any errors that I've made or, or any oversights, uh, that's all the benefit to me, and I'd be more than happy to recognise it in a in a video down the track. Anyway, we'll get stuck into it and and have a chat about the oiling system on this thing. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do when you're designing an oiling system is actually think about what you are going to be using the car for. Uh, Ultimas reportedly pull about 1.3 to 1.5 G on a Toyo R Triple Eight R on a track. Uh, that's in the worst situation, such as you know a, a long sustained high speed corner or you know somewhere there's that and a bit of a drop off that type of thing. Uh, fast, fast road cars generate up to 1.2 to 1.3 G. Uh, there's a list here that I've got that's it's a little bit out of date, but you can see that the winning GT3 RS on Cup Twos uh, made 1.24 G. Uh, so if we look at the top top left here, you can see that there's a diagram of a of a stock wet sump system, and what that uh, what that does is you can see here when you go around a corner, you actually end up with the oil sort of tapering up to the side of the oil pan. In the worst case situation, you can actually end up uh, having the oil pick up itself being out of the oil. And obviously in that particular instance, you're not going to have any oil running to the engine because the pump can't suck it up and deliver it. Uh, what you can do to improve that is you can run what you call an, a baffled oil pan, which basically is an oil pan that has a set of obstructions in it that will avoid all of the oil running away from the pickup point. Uh, this is sort of a, a, a next best measure and something that was particularly, you know, useful in in uh, the era of DTM, which which kind of used stuff like uh, baffled oil pans and it also used a, a pickup that was on a, a bearing that actually used to rotate and and go to the low side of the oil pan for pickup. Um, that's what I'm going to be using here, not not one with a bearing but like they used in DTM, but, but a baffled sump and it's good for about 1.4 Gs based on the data that we'll run over. Uh, the next step, which which is sort of the, the best possible system, is to go to a full dry sump setup. 
such as this one down here, which shows the Moroso type of system. As you can see, there's a lot of a lot of piping. This one's a, a three-stage pickup system, and then also so within this pump, you've got you've got three low-pressure pickup points, uh, which delivers to this tank, and then you've also got your one high-pressure side of the pump. So it's a four-stage pump that delivers the oil to the motor. This is sort of the best option, and there's nowhere within your sump, which is always very low profile uh, with multiple pickups, where your oil can get to, uh, where it can sort of you know escape and, and not be returned to the oil to the engine. The one thing which you do need in a in a dry sump setup, you can see in the top top diagram here, is you need a large oil reservoir on the LS systems. You typically see that you go to a, a, an oil quantity of about eight liters instead of you know five or six or seven or whatever the standard is um, and this is stored up quite high and it's usually an elongated tank uh, and and it has some baffling in it and some pretty trick stuff just to try and separate a bit of the air out of the oil before it it returns to the high pressure side of this pump and then is pumped into the engine so anyway that's that's what happens with a, a wet sump system there's its drawbacks that's a, a baffled baffled sump which is gonna which is gonna help and then ultimately you've got the you've got the full dry sump setup which is as you can see obviously has a lot of an lines and a lot of a lot of trick trick bits that that uh, ensure you can have oil under almost any conditions. All right, so in terms of how the AccuSump fits into all of this, uh, an AccuSump is basically a ballast tank that, that has a free-floating piston uh, in the center. You've got one side which has an air reservoir with a basic charge of 10 PSI, and on the other side of the piston, you've got uh, the high-pressure oil side from your, from your oil pump, and this is, this is all filled with oil. Uh, the brace pressure is set by a valve at the top like a like you'd see on a car tire and um, you've got a, a pressure gauge that that will allow you to see uh, w what's occurring in in the accu sump itself uh, once i've got this fitted i can probably do a video that actually shows how this this builds and loses pressure uh, the one that i've chosen is a two core to 1.9 liter accu sump uh, that's because it is designed for a motor like similar size to a small block chevy obviously depending on what you're running is is you know the size can change it goes up to three quart or there's a small one for you know smaller capacity four cylinder engines or or, or whatever um what happens in the reservoir is that uh regardless of what your oil pressure is you'll get an equal you'll get an equalization between the the air side and the oil side in terms of pressure uh at, at idle where you have relatively low oil pressure you'll have quite a bit of air and you'll have quite a little bit of oil um, as as rpm builds you'll end up with quite a bit of oil and a little bit of air um this is dictated by a thing called Boyle's law which which states that uh the pressure and volume are, in, in a closed system at one point will also equal the pressure and volume at a second point. Uh, that's for a constant temperature and quantity system. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of bastardize that a little bit uh, with an approximation because temperature will vary in this case. Uh, but so I'll just apply a bit of a fudge, fudge factor to keep the mathematics simple. Um, and I probably should use SI units, so I'm not, so I don't sound like as much of a gronk, but that doesn't sort of matter in this isolated case. Uh, so at the start, if we have an accumulator filled with uh, 10 psi air, and uh, you know it's it's virtually virtually sort of empty, and you've got the full 1.9 liters of air in there, um, when you are running at sort of 50 psi of, of oil pressure, you'll you'll end up with about 1.4 liters of oil in here. So let, let's sort of call it 1.2. You know, applying a bit of a fudge factor for that temperature and that sort of thing. Um, Look, temperature is actually a pretty important factor with these things, so it's, it's a good idea to keep these keep these insulated. They actually have a pressure relief valve for, for good reason to to avoid uh, any anything happening catastrophic in that sense. You don't want oil blowing out of this thing and and going everywhere. Um, so as I mentioned, there are wet sump systems that that provide uh, 1.4 g of uh, can provide oil uh, sustained oil delivery to to an oil pump at at, at 1.4 g's. Um, note that using gravity as a metric for this comparison uh, should be done under acceleration, braking, and cornering. And the reason we use it is because it does give you an idea about how how well the the oil pickup is going to be sort of able to to get the oil to it. Um, for a car like this with big aero, cornering is usually the adjudicator. Um, transient G-spikes also don't really mean anything because a momentary jump isn't generally enough to, to splash a complete reservoir of oil away from the, the pickup to the crank. Um, so anyhow, you've got the uh, connection to your block here that's going to be feeding potentially through your through your oil cooler to your AccuSump. You've got a check valve here so that if you do end up with starvation on this side, the AccuSump provides oil to the engine and not back to the sump. 
and then uh, what happens here is that if you if you're running at say 50 psi at uh, you know 6,000 rpm or something like that, this reservoir is going to be quite full. And then if you end up with oil starvation, this will start to discharge and provide oil to the engine. And whilst ever it's it's uh, starved of oil, you'll you'll get obviously a taper off in in pressure and flow to the to the engine accordingly. But it won't just drop off a precipice and you'll be running dry immediately. Um, if you look down here at the at the test data from the improved racing sump that, that I'll be using, the red line here actually shows the oil pressure relative to the G on on their sort of test track, and you can see here the f the factory sump in the red actually has times where where it's sucking fresh air, and that's that's really what you don't want. Whereas the black line shows oil pressure at up to 1.4 G sustained, and it and it's relatively stable. The one thing is is that if we add this in with an accu sump all of these very jagged type lines that you're seeing here will also start to smooth out a bit because this buffer tank does does sort of take up any of the little little bumps and and you know that that are in this line here which is which is good for oiling to your engine uh, one thing that seems to get mentioned often when someone starts a vehicle fitted with an accu sump having you know spun a bearing or died is uh, that I always wonder whether they are running a, a, an appropriate sump and oil pickup system as well like these things don't generate oil they store oil so if you have extended periods where this thing is not receiving any oil and the engine is not receiving any oil you're not going to have it's not this magical thing that just supplies oil endlessly to your motor so that's the first thing um the next thing i'd always ask is whether they had an appropriate ecu with oil safeties based off engine rpm and, and a properly positioned sensor um you know that's that's something that's really important. If you if you have oil drop off at, at when you're up here at high high RPM, you should you should be able to see fairly immediately that that's that that's occurred. And and what would happen normally in a motor is that it will limit RPM, cut spark, or do do a whole whole number of other things. Um, I might I might run through the ECU that I've selected in in another video and explain why these safeties are so important and and how sophisticated ECUs are now in terms of picking that stuff up. Um, as we spoke about, you're sort of going to have 1.2 liters of oil stored in this once we're up high in the in the RPM. If you're looking at this um, uh, upgraded oil pump, which is which is the item that I'll be using, um, you're still talking about 0.5 liters a second or so that's getting getting provided to the motor at the at the upper end of the spectrum. So if you've got 1.2 liters in here, I'm sure it will start to degrade as soon as you end up with starvation. You, you're still going to have up to sort of two seconds of, of oil provided to your engine before you're actually running completely dry. And with a properly set up ECU, it should mean that you can pick that up pretty quickly and also you're not going to do any any damage to your engine. I mean, if you have an, an audible beep in your car and you choose to stay into the throttle for two seconds after after you end up running dry on your oil pressure, well, I'd have to say you're a bit of a moron and not paying too much attention. Uh, so anyhow, that's that's sort of my rationale for making sure that that stuff that stuff, uh, you know, is as safe as it possibly can be. Um, the other thing that AccuSumps also offer is uh, the great option of being able to be isolated before you shut off the motor. So when you're running at your base oil pressure here, your AccuSumps obviously going to have some oil in it. And what you can do is you can shut the valve to this oiling system, this isolation valve here. It'll store the oil in it, then you turn your car off. Now, if you leave it for several weeks and then you come back to the car and you, you actually just turn this valve on, it'll inject some oil into your motor and provide some lubrication to the top of the motor before you start the engine. Um, there's a heap of wear that occurs from a cold engine in that time that it takes for your oil pressure to suck up the oil from the pan that's all drained back there and provide it to the top side of your engine. But having this AccuSump and being able to just sort of pre-oil the engine is a really good way to look after things uh, long term, you know, and you should get some better longevity out of it. Uh, now... Look, I, I'd say that I'll probably be restricted in, in one sense by running the system that I'm running at. Uh, and and the reason that that I'm sort of happy with that is that tyres are the are the final adjudicator on drip on grip. Um, I'd say I'll be running Pilot Sport 4S on mine for road and track, which would bring the handling threshold to the you know same as ridiculously fast cars around that 1.4 G instead of being at insane levels of grip. Uh, now, make no mistake, this isn't going to make the car a mild experience to drive, but, you know, it, it's going to enable me to do some ridiculously good times without without me having to go too crazy. Um, if I if the car ever does end up a dry sump, it, it won't be a half hour system. It'll be a throw, three or four pickup arrangement with a separator and so forth, uh, so I can run some you know full race slicks and try and take some lap, lap records for road registered vehicles. Uh, the car would probably be capable of it, uh, but there's a lot of setup 
you know, money and refinement that's that's required to make that tenable. Um, if, if I think it's something that's possible, then I'll deal with that then. It's not that hard to retrofit a sump and, a, and a, you know, a daily dry system. They're, they're really good to be able to install. Um, who knows? Maybe this is all bullshit and I'll have to do it because of an impromptu uh, inspection hole in the side of my LS block. Um, that's that's okay. I, I hear that uh, T is a great assembly loop. Um, you know, I'm actually joking now, but... Uh, you know, if, if that ever does happen, there'll probably be a video series of me crying like a little girl, like, you know, all the chicks on The Bachelor when they realise that the bloke's having it off with all the other chicks. Um, but, look, that's that's sort of my oiling system. That's that's my rationale behind it. Um, and I, I just don't see that it's necessary to, to go to the full expense of going to a full dry sump system to, to do something that I'm never going to need it to do. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching again. I definitely welcome some, some roasting or discussion about these things if you agree or disagree. Uh, YouTube said I made $10.67 the other day, so I'm not sure how I'd ever get that money, but if it does end up in my account, what I'll do is I'll put that towards improving the videos, but maybe even uh, buy a couple of tools like that awesome hammer that I showed in one of the previous videos and, and give it to one of the commenters out there and maybe it'll help them with one of their projects. Um, seems like a good idea for me to be able to give back to that. Uh, I know what it's like to try and build cars with uh, pretty budget tools, so if, if I can help someone else get their project on the road, that'll always be, a, a, I guess, a good outcome from, from what we're doing here. Anyway, as I say, thanks very much and we'll chat next time. So it's always good to have a car that uh, doesn't have a clutch so you can learn how to match revs on the downstretch. Special Land Rover with a clutchless uh, transmission. And this is probably the one to try on a um, rental car or one of your mates' cars so that you don't uh, clean the teeth on your own gearbox. But it will teach you how to drive a drive a vehicle and especially when you're racing, being able to go up and down through the gearbox and match revs correctly. It's something that you would have learned if you've driven anything from like the pre-30s or pre, pre second world war era where they didn't have synchros on boxes. It actually helps your racing because when you're matching revs you can do it without even thinking.